Hey ladies and gents, and welcome to the Controlled Interests Gamecast, where we talk about video games and everything happening in the industry, episode 180. And as always, I'm joined by Dom. It was an honor, and is an honor tonight, and has been for many previous nights. I'm not dead, motherfucker! <laughs> I, think, and, I think you're dying. And, I think Jordan is dead today. And for the last time, as a regular co-host, Jordan. Show me that smile again. Don't waste another, Don't waste another minute on your crying. That's for you, Dom. That was deep. That was good. <laughs> so there wasn't any major uh, gaming news this week, so we didn't have to shift our plans any. This is going to be, as we intended, a Jordan-centric podcast. Uh, uh, the way we're going to do it be. is <laughs> the first half is going to be Jordan talking about uh, his favorite games, and it's going to be more of a free-flowing conversation. Uh, and then the second half will be more about uh, him being on the podcast, the experience of doing that, and all that good stuff. Uh, and I'll have some really cool uh, data. I went through all 180 episodes. Well, technically 179. Well, no, actually 180 because we had 49.1, remember, Jordan? So technically 189. 49.1. Uh, and compiled some statistics regarding... Uh, Jordan's involvement in the podcast, which is really interesting. Uh, a couple of Dom-centric stats as well. So, uh, uh, I love that. With that out of the way, uh, Jordan, go ahead. Well, first of all, I just want to say uh, I've been watching Better Call Saul. Oh. <laughs> and boy, oh fucking boy, this is the way to watch these shows. Now that I've, like previously had watched them week to week uh now i am enjoying it even more somehow uh through the lens of having it all ready to go right there at your fingertips um now of course i'm trying not to binge watch it i'm also trying to like i just finished season two so i'm trying to like not go too fast because i i want all of season five to be out by the time i'm finishing season four so uh, I'll probably be going back to The Outsider, which is another show that I started watching this week. Uh, but, man, just with Better Call Saul, it really does separate itself as it, totally its own thing. And I know that, Dom, you and I have uh, obviously spoken about this show before on our show. But um, I really understand the pacing of the show now more. Uh, part of the reason being that I'm not watching week to week. Um, they, it's the way I describe the series to people is, oh, it's slower than Breaking Bad, but somehow still just as interesting, if not maybe more. And I think what it is that both Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul have is that if they're moving too slowly for you, they really don't give a fuck. They are going at their own pace, marching to the beat of their own drum. <clears throat> and that is what makes the fucking series special. That is why they are top tier, heads above all the rest. I think you're right, and like the it's all intentional. Like the pace, the length of the series, and how everything is spread out. It's all like you, more so with Better Call Saul because it, you know it's a prequel, so you know it has to end at right. a certain point. Right. But Breaking Bad was the same way, where you could feel like you knew there was an ending that was definite and it was planned. Like everything is just very designed, and so yeah. I think you're right that the pace was. Uh, it just is, and they're, they're, that's how they're doing it. Um, and I and love for Saul, that. it's I don't even know that it's necessarily as I kind of reflect necessarily like slower paced. It's just not as action heavy. So like things happen, but they're not yeah. as much like you know violence necessarily in, sure. in big events. Sure, it's more subtle. It changes. pulls back a little bit on the crime drama, but I will say I've been pleasantly surprised with how much interesting stuff still goes on in the show. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that uh, just kind of going back and touching on the point from earlier of like the reason that Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, regardless of uh, what you think about the shows, I think we can all agree that they are uh, regarded as unique shows, not even just uh, the Breaking Bad franchise, but even the shows individually between the two are very unique in their own right. And there's so many good shows that I watch. Good shows, you know, quote quotes around good. Um, kind of like the swimming in sevens argument where it's like 
this is competently made it's decent it's solid but it's not really special it's not really great it's not really riveting or compelling and I think that's just because uh, you could say this for more than just TV but I think especially in modern TV there's not enough uniqueness and so when someone uh, craftsmen like these guys uh, Peter Gould and Vince Gilligan uh, hop onto something like these projects we've been discussing they are able to show you um, what what that difference looks like uh, what the uh, bar for excellence should be like where um, they are truly doing something special that is um, like I said unique and so I don't want to ramble on too long about that I just wanted to give a gigantic shout out before I uh, finish up my tenure here to not only better uh, Breaking Bad but of course the immaculate prequel that is Better Call Saul How's that season five treating you, by the way, Dom? It's good. Yeah. It's. Ooh, I don't want to say much. Don't say it, shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's. It's more. And more it's, good stuff. It's getting places. They're not fucking anything up, is what you're telling me. Certainly not fucking anything okay. up. And you did enjoy El Camino. Yeah, it was excellent. Cool. Well, there we go. So that's what I'll talk about uh, there uh, for what I've been doing this week. But uh, as you. Uh, led into earlier Jared we're talking about some of my favorite games and I I gotta say I intentionally uh, had a lack of preparation here because I really did want to just draw things out of a hat of not necessarily you know we've talked about I could give you the list of like oh some of Jordan's favorite games of all time we could go back to Bioshock or Witcher 3 or you know we could talk for hours about Jack X combat racing I mean the depth and that game alone is is awe inspiring. But um, Bloodborne. Instead, I think that there are special experiences that we have with video games that don't turn out to be your favorite, don't turn out to be the best of all time, but nonetheless uh, are special. I think that's where a lot of the swimming in sevens comes from. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to start pulling stuff out of a hat and seeing if you guys would play it, what you know about it, what you feel about it, and so I want to start off with a Nintendo 64 game. And that is called Mickey Mouse Super Speedway. Now, I think that's the name of it, if I'm remembering correctly. But it's the Mickey Mouse Kart Racer on Nintendo 64. Oh, damn. Um, it's certainly a Mario Kart knockoff. Did you guys ever play it? Never heard of no. it. No. That heard? just learning of its Boy, existence now. Okay. <laughs> personally i enjoyed it now obviously this is when i was a child didn't even own mario kart you know it's just the, one of those things where like you get a console and you get the games that you get you don't always get to pick the games especially if it's like you know the first few games that you're getting with the console your parents kind of just grab those and i think this was one of those situations and from what i can remember as a very young child it's a competent kart racer with all your favorite characters starring you know mickey donald goofy whoever and there's shortcuts it's uh you know it's a car racer so um you're going all around the united states as you had probably already guessed um but um i'm looking up a video right now by the way i gotta right, see what right. this shit looks like so i was correct about the title then uh mickey speedway usa oh mickey speedway usa that's what it was not super speedway um i thought that might be it but Anyways, um, how's it looking over there? Is it yeah, looking competent? Screen. Oh, okay. So I, I, I just wanted to give this one a quick shout out. We don't have to focus on it too long, especially if you gentlemen have not played it. But um, yeah. <laughs> this, this literally is Mario Kart 64, except you're Mickey. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. That's yeah. what it is. <laughs> So shout out to Mickey Speedway USA, right? That's the title. Mickey Speedway yep. USA for N64. Um, Jared, you got any thoughts there? <laughs> no, I'm. It's it, ripoffs of successful games weren't too uh, rare at, at that, that point in gaming history. Sure. So I'm not sure. shocked that Disney did a ripoff of you know Mario Kart. Sure. Um, and the games we liked as kids, you know, a lot of them were, were dumb games. You know, we just right. played what we had. Yeah. Yeah. The second game I want to give a shout out to 
is very special, near and dear to my heart, and that game is called Sly Two: Ooh. Honor Among Thieves. Is it? Is the subtitle? I got you. Hang on. Thieves. Thievius Raccoonus is the first one. I think Honor Among Thieves might be the third one. I should have at least picked out the titles, but I did want to make this as what's the uncharted what's possible. the uncharted subtitle with thieves in it? A thieves end among, among thieves. Or and a Thieves End. That's a different one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Sly 2 looks like Sly 2 Band of Thieves. Band of Thieves is, is number two. It's super special, as you can tell. I remember the title. Um, <laughs> nonetheless, this was actually the first Sly Cooper game that I played. And, and I do want to call special attention to the fact that uh, I have, of course, on this podcast, talked a great deal about the other ps2 sony platformers which would be ratchet and clank and jack and daxter but i haven't talked quite as much about sly though it certainly got mentioned uh with the recent sansari stuff especially but uh sly 2 was the first one that i played i'm pretty sure it was bundled in with my ps2 if not then it was just the game one of the games that i got when i got a ps2 and uh man what a special special game now uh i think we know that sucker punch is my favorite video game studio if not one of them i will say um and sly cooper is certainly where that starts i mean i think that sly cooper is one of the most special and unique video game series of all time i also think that it's of an extremely high quality which is uh, different from you know some of the other unique games that I w- was mentioning. But uh, yeah, Sly is uh, a raccoon that um, goes around with his buddies thieving. Uh, he's kind of, kind of a Robin Hood guy, uh, but he's not really giving to the poor. He's mostly just stealing from the rich. But he, he's, he feels like a good, a good solid raccoon guy. <laughs> uh, feels like a solid person. His companions are great. Uh, the sound design is incredible in these games with the, the sneaking sounds and the uh, various sounds of the environments around you, whether you're in Paris or the jungle or wherever. Um, the stealth is, is, I would say, excellently designed with uh, platforming oftentimes at its finest. Um, the visual aesthetic of the game is gorgeous it is you know like a kind of noir feeling cartoon uh with very stylized feel so uh gigantic shout out to the entire sly franchise but i do want to say sly 2 uh band of thieves right specifically yep, yep. is spectacular spectacular video think... game and it is available in hd on the playstation 3 uh, I guess they couldn't get it to run on the PS4. That's a conundrum. But um, yeah. have you guys experienced this title? Not Sly Two. I definitely I played a lot of Sly One gotcha. um, at a friend's house. But I think, I mean, at the time, like these games were were like pretty sweet. Like I mean. It brought together a lot of elements, and I'm I'm gonna be wrong here, but I feel like at the time, not many games did this where you know it's a it's a plat it's a 3d platformer it's a stealth game it's an action game like that's a lot of different gameplay elements i feel like um oh yeah oh yeah and then yeah the style is very unique and uh and and this was the the land of action platformers too at the time so you got your raccoon who wears a he's got a mask over his eyes which is weird but um (laughs) as if that's protecting his identity but yeah it's funny it's um, it's definitely got some goofy tongue in cheek stuff, you know. Yeah, but you're right. It's this I'm pretty sure that that collection exists on the Vita, and of course PS3. But yes, yes, yes. But not PS4. We Unfortunately, not. Yeah. Which is somehow like the technical limitations are just too much to overcome. So. Yeah, it's it's a uh, top notch PS2 game, so that's tough for the PS4 to handle. <laughs> uh, I've never played a Sly Cooper game, which is funny because. I love, like, the character and his whole band of, like, misfits. Yeah. Um, I don't think – I see it this way, but I don't, I don't know if many people draw the line in terms of comparison. But 
Sly Cooper has always felt like PlayStation's answer to Star Fox in a way, because Star Fox is a series with a named character, right, and a mascot, but he's also known for his, like, band of, like, other pilots around him, right? Slippy and all of them. Uh, yeah. And Sly Cooper always felt like that to me, because whenever you see Sly Cooper, it's also with his pals as well. Got the um, hippo, the frog. Yeah. I don't know their names, but they're in there. <laughs> a turtle, I think right? I, I, I mentioned them buddy. recently. It's, it's Bentley turtle, and yep, Murray. Murray is the hippo, and Bentley is the mm. turtle. Um, if they're, I really, I'm hoping for, and this is actually possible with the PS5 since we didn't really have it with the PS4, uh, like a, tr- a remaster trilogy. You know what I mean? That'd be pretty dope. Yeah, if I'd, we did I'd, get a remaster on the remaster, that'd be great. They I'd did ho- finally put the Jack games on PS4, like separated and kind of pricey. But they don't have any. They made it. But they don't have any like improvements, right? Yeah, I so think what it's just that like is, ports. Dom, yeah. even more confusing if you could imagine it. Those are actually just straight ports of the PS2 version, even yeah. though they spent the time on PS3 to remaster them in fucking HD. Okay, so it's even weirder than I could have guessed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which sucks, because, like, at least with Xbox, you know, you can play these old games and they do get enhancements, even if they're subtle enhancements to the graphics. Right. It sucks that PlayStation doesn't have that in place. But, like I was saying, if there is a, a trilogy remaster for PS5, I want to pick it up because it is a series I've always been interested in. It's just one yes. of those games I never got around to actually playing, you know? So. Just to be clear on your previous point, Jared, when Sony brings a PS2 game over to PS4, they do actually give you uh, like a, you know improved resolution and frame rate frame rate as uh, Microsoft would, um, and they also add trophy support. So that is what ah uh, yes for PS2 okay. games that didn't have trophies. That I remember was a thing for Jack on right. PS4 was there yeah. were trophies. Right. Well, they made a trophy list when they put it on PS3, but yes, <laughs> it, it does it for games that weren't remastered on PS3 from the PS2. Uh, they never got trophies, obviously. Yeah. Those are pretty much my thoughts. So, cool, cool, cool. I like Sly this format Cooper. so far. This is, you're pulling out some gems here and like some random I'm into this. They're 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 not I will say they're not gonna be your uh oh did you guys play Call of Duty four Modern Warfare? Did you guys play that game? <laughs> it's not gonna be like that, you know. What a pool um, with me and Dom. We played enough yeah. of that game combined. <laughs> Jesus <Exactly>. Christ. <laughs> exactly. So um but you know what? Since I mentioned it Let's talk about Call of Duty World at War. Good one. Because it's a good game. this is the single Call of Duty game, maybe even, I guess you could say, single multiplayer game, online multiplayer game, that I've really gotten into and was more than, like, five levels from where you start, right? Like, I moved past that. I didn't, like, prestige or any of that nerd shit, but I did, in fact, uh, get pretty into World at War because I thought it was a, a good balance for Call of Duty. You know, the... Uh, Modern Warfare stuff gets really fast-paced, so uh, I personally liked going back to the, um, you know, the World War II stuff, so. I have an interesting story of the World at War, by the way. It's funny that you picked this one. And is that the one where they started zombies, or did this one just have zombies? Yeah, Yeah, it was the first one, because it was like, oh, Nazi So that is probably what got me into it, because, yeah, like, coming home from school and hitting up the guys that you just left school with, um, and all getting on the... The zombie uh, knock their so, kill is a lot of fun. So from like 2005 to I want to say 2010, up until I graduated okay. high school, I had a really hardcore group of local friends that played Call of Duty together, right? Okay. Uh, we would Some just local go killers. ham. Yeah, go ham on Call of Duty. Gang. The one. So between 2004 and 2020, the one year I didn't have internet was the year that World at War came out, and Basically, what I found out is I was kind of the glue that kept everyone together. So the that Jared, year, the, linger, the leader of the New Mexico gunslingers, bro. <laughs> God. Uh, that whole year, no one played Call of Duty together. But then the year I came back, everything was back to normal as it was. But I found out in that year that I didn't have internet. Uh, yeah, no one played together or whatever. Uh, and that's the that's one Call of Duty game. Together. It's the one Call of Duty call of duty game between like 2005 and 2010 i didn't prestige at least five times like we would go like we would go ham on call of duty uh so i have like no memories of it because it was just happened to be the year i didn't have internet and it's like why buy a call of duty game if you don't have internet you know what i mean like what's what's the point at that couch co-op zombies man 
I don't like zombies. That's one thing. I don't like Call of Duty zombies. I never have. I mean, I don't really either anymore, but at the <laughs> time, that was, like, the coolest shit in the world for, like, a couple years there. Like, that was, like, all you would do was just play zombies. Like, like Jordan said, just, like, get home. I would get home from hockey practice. I had, like, roommates at the time even, and, like, hockey that's what we would just play fucking zombies over and over again. And I, it's psychotic now that I think about it because it'd be like, oh, we lost at level 12. And it, it, it was, the gameplay was just not that deep and you would just keep on trying to get farther along you always yeah. would lose and now yeah. i would not do that anymore because that and I, sounds awful i wonder if my not liking it is because i wasn't there at the initial like reveal of it like i didn't play world of war so i didn't get that initial burst of like getting into it with everyone else right so by the time i got to zombies everyone had already had so much time with it that they were like oh you have to get this this is a strategy for this and the one thing i don't like in multiplayer games is when i feel like i'm being led along like a child right like uh like everyone's Come trying on, to explain Jerry. everything to me because everybody's so far ahead that they don't want me to be dragging them down because i'm still learning everything which i totally understand because right. when i'm that deep into a game that i'm experienced with i don't want to kind of trudge people along with me like i'm their chaperone you know absolutely so, yeah some good this is the first well actually this is three games in a row i've never played <laughs> you know what i mean uh right. but at least this one had a funny story for me i was like oh well if i talk about world of war at least we'll have something that everybody played <laughs> yep <laughs> funny enough you picked <sighs> that one out of all of them so funny yeah I'm trying to think of random stuff that i really enjoyed that i haven't brought up on the show a million times you know what i mean which uh, let's go by console gen like, any psp no? games you want to talk yeah, about yeah there we go Jared, that's a great poll right there now, but if we're going to talk about PSP, man, I just, I, I absolutely have to talk about Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. Mm. I can't, I can't talk about PSP without mentioning that game. And yes, it is, it does happen to be a game that I've mentioned a hundred times on this show. But let me tell you why it's so special and why in my heart and soul, it's the best Kingdom Hearts game. Um... It came out after Kingdom Hearts 2 and obviously way before we had Kingdom Hearts 3 or even like 3D Dream Drop Distance, which was our 3 for a long time. Um, but man, it is, you know, for the PSP not having dual thumbsticks, it has a really excellent combat system and it has a, what's called a command deck system, which is like if you've played the Kingdom Hearts games, then you have this this kind of command deck in the right bottom corner or left bottom corner and it's you can kind of like flip through it with your d-pad while you're doing combat and you can choose your magic spells or just to continue attacking normally or or whatever so um but in this game they really built up on that and they uh, allowed you to kind of like level up your command deck and you could have multiple of them, so you would like customize the command deck to have you know certain attacks or certain magic spells, and those magic spells, let's say for example, would be leveling up as well. So I've got a level four, or I don't know what what like the top level is. Let's say it's level five is the top level, uh, Blizzard or Fire. Then Blizzaga. I can. Yeah, then I can like flip those. You can like uh, use a recipe and, and turn them into a Blizzaga, or then go to Blizzara. You can upgrade your attacks. You can upgrade the command deck and um, customize stuff. You can meld stuff. You can uh, put in different recipes and get out different um, special uh, attacks or magic spells. So um, it's kind of a little bit hard to describe without... Uh, really breaking it down so I'm trying not to go too far into it but nonetheless it is uh, widely entertaining uh, for me at least and uh, the story is certainly not perfect in the game it centers around these three characters that are connected to uh, Sora, Riku, and Kairi that are in some ways um, not mirror images but they are um, they feel like those characters, if that makes any sense. They have kind of the vibe of those characters. And um, so they're supposed to be connected in some ways. And you play through individual campaigns 
uh, for the different characters, and then there's an epilogue. So um, it's really cool when you think about it. In a PSP game, there's going to be like the environments are not going to be nearly as varied or diverse or interesting as a fully fledged console game, even back in that day. With that being said, it's interesting how they basically just made the one campaign. Well, not the one campaign, but they made the one set of environments for a single campaign. And then you just go to them three times. But there's different pieces of the environment that you may go to as one character. Or obviously things may have changed. Uh, if one character comes through and makes a mess and then the second character comes through and is like reacting to that. Um, it's interesting to see the... Uh, campaigns, the three varied campaigns overlap in those ways. So, uh, enjoyable combat system. Uh, for me, it was an enjoyable enough story. And though not all the new characters were fantastic, I did enjoy some of them. And and we end up getting my favorite Kingdom Hearts character, Aqua, out of the series. So, um, I guess neither of you guys have played this game. Or Dom, did you get around to Birth by Sleep? Yeah, it was last year in preparation for three. I did. I played through it on PS4. So you finished it. Yeah. And do you remember what order you played the campaigns in? This is. It's a good thing you ask. So I didn't do. I didn't look this up. And you should. There's a right order to play them through. I really actually choose. didn't look it up my first time either. Yeah. So I played with Aqua first, which is the oh. wrong way to do it, because She's as she goes end. through the campaign, it's technically the last. Yeah, because the the campaign uh, each character goes through each of the worlds, in this in an order in a fixed order, right? But you can play them. I did Aqua, and she went through each world last, so she was right. she was getting all the story, um, in her playthrough. But I didn't know the story of the other two characters, so I, I pretty much had the whole thing spoiled by playing with her first. Yeah. Um, so I did it in the wrong way, actually. So, yeah, <laughs> but it was still good. I will say, if you play it what is technically the right way. You may not end up finishing the game because I'm pretty sure you start with Terra, who is the least interesting character with the least interesting story. Yeah. And it's kind of sucks that they put the, like the bummer campaign at the beginning and then you get to the good stuff, but that's how it is. I have no so, experience Jared, with this game. What about so, you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, funny enough, but so you we, do uh, have experience in the sense that you've like, you know what it is. You've seen it marketed to you. You've seen the cover. I'm sure you've heard us talk about it. Well, and more uh, relevant now, you can actually play it on Xbox, right? Finally. Uh, yeah, for way more money Did than that you... release. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's part of the. Oh yeah, wait for yeah. a sale. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm still gonna buy it because I I'm the one that made a big old hush bush, but I'm not gonna be paying as much as they're asking for right now. I'm not that desperate for it. Man, what's the cost? It was... It's sixty bucks for both uh, of them separately. The the one that like has all of them together, and then the one that has uh, just the three main games, or however it, was, it is. But you it was really painful. how many individual games that entails, right? Yeah, but it's like twenty bucks on PlayStation. Yeah, well, yeah it was. It came out. Though. It was painful to look at because it came out uh, on Xbox for that price, and then there was a sale on PlayStation for like the, the same all day. in one package, <laughs> yeah. which was like every single game for like and that was for like forty bucks. For every yeah. single Kingdom Hearts game on PlayStation, um, and so then you next just to have it, to have trophies, I guess, or uh, achievements, I guess. Uh, yeah, I just want to play it on Xbox. I mean, you know, I'm not really. You waited this long for Xbox. Exactly, I can, I can wait for a price drop. Um, gotcha. gotcha. With I, so I didn't play it at release because I was huge into Kingdom Hearts one, and I was so stoked to eventually play Kingdom Hearts. Did this come out after or before Kingdom Hearts two? After. After. Okay, so yeah, I played Kingdom Hearts two. And then I By the way, PS... for those that don't know, it is a prequel to the whole series. It is canonically right. the first entry. Well, sorry, the uh, mobile game deal takes place way before everything else, but this takes place 10 years or 12 years, I think, before KH1. Sorry. Uh, so, yeah, I, I played and completed Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, and I had a PSP at the time. And yeah. when I saw this game announced, obviously I didn't do a whole lot of research. I was, you know, younger. But uh, I was just like, oh, this is like a weird Japanese spinoff of it. I'm not really interested. Like, I didn't even do any research or anything. I just saw the name, and I saw that I didn't have a three at the end of it. You have failed this podcast. Uh, well, and even then, for the PSP, I couldn't afford to buy a lot of games. And the only thing I really bought were NCAA football and Madden every year because 
I was I was in football and we were traveling all the time and I was like I think I was the only kid on the football team that had a PSP um, for a long while uh, so yeah I was just into football games and stuff I I didn't own any other PSP games besides NCAA football games and Madden games your wow. childhood self has failed this podcast hey man I had a yep. blast I have no regrets there is even like a great Star Wars Battlefront game on PSP that sounds weird I played that one. I didn't own it. My friend had uh, had that. I, I never got around to buying it though. I mean, it, and it I also played like Daxter. Now, I think. But... Right, Daxter was on the PSP. I was thinking about saying Daxter, but I, I just couldn't get pass up my my favorite handheld game of all time. I'll say. Uh, the PSP. The, uh, Peace Walker was on the PSP, right? Yes. Yeah, I never yes. played that. Now uh, I'll give a quick shout out to that game. Though I will say that I played it on PS3. I don't think I could have ever played a third-person shooter on the PSP. God. <laughs> uh, I think we have time for one more if you want to do one more, Jordan. If you want to. Um, let's see. So you, you mentioned PSP. What other console would you guys like to hear about? Fucking GBA. All right. Game Boy. Any Game yeah, Boy. Let's go Nintendo. I don't think you did anything Nintendo. Yeah. Well, we had uh, Mickey Mouse. Uh, <laughs> like, USA yeah, yeah, on the a, a, a Nintendo ripoff by Disney. Yeah, <laughs> you know what, Jared? I played it on Nintendo. Yeah, um, Nintendo game. So let's see, GBA. Now, I didn't ever have the OG GBA. I just had my family actually had the SP. I think it was my brothers, but I played on it all the time. And I'm trying to remember what is a great pick from the GBA. The funny thing is I had the GBA, the the OG that needed the backlight, like the thing that the like the little lamp that you plug on top to give you the light cuz they didn't have one, right? A um, one light? Yes. Yeah. Well, that was and, for I had that for color. And then my uh buddy had the the clamp one. I was kind of jealous. Yeah, so SP was the first one with a backlight, which is honestly astonishing even though it's crazy. You know, it makes sense that it would just kill double A batteries on like a Game Boy Color if you think about it. But nonetheless, I will say this. I don't have an extensive knowledge of the GBA because of skipping the original GBA and then having the DS. So I'm gonna get away from handheld here. I'm gonna go back home to the console space, but I will stick with Nintendo since Jared just has to have it his way. <laughs> Game Boy or GameCube. GameCube, Dominic. I would love to tell you about the vast amount of lovely experiences I had with the GameCube. But I think I'll tell you about a little game called Mario Kart Double Dash. Double Dash. As it's known <laughs> in uh, North America. So, Double Dash is kind of the black sheep, I would say, of the Mario Kart franchise, with it being the, I think, only entry, mainline entry, possibly only entry period, that, you know, allows you to have two, pe two characters on one cart, and possibly even two players on one cart. Um, I would say that's a mode that I would love to see come back to the game. Not necessarily the entire thing, uh, but still be a mode nonetheless um, because you can you can still play as a single player you know driving a cart that has two characters on it and you can you know the second character is just throwing out your items essentially and they can switch if they want if you want I think uh, but you know I think it still has like great um, well it looks great it has it has beautiful visuals but it has great tracks it had the soundtrack it had Everything that you would want in a Mario game, and I'll be damned if it's not a gigantic upgrade from N64, thank you very much. Because that game is fucking rough. Of all the Mario Kart games, N64 Mario Kart is rough to go back to. Whereas you definitely think, had to be ahead. there at the time. Exactly. The whereas when I was emulating Double Dash on Dolphin in beautiful 1080p on a PC several years ago... That was great to go back to. Lots of fun for the whole family. Um, and then, of course, we've had Wii and uh, Mario Kart on Wii U, which has turned into 8 Deluxe on the Switch. Um, and those are really great entries. So it's 
So I think that's why uh, Double Dash kind of gets forgotten about, just like the original Mario Kart on the SNES or the uh, N64 Mario Kart, which, you know, other than the nostalgia, probably deserves to be forgotten. But uh, nonetheless, I do just want to give lots and lots of love to Double Dash. It was one of those games that I originally borrowed from a friend um, and just played so much of that by the time he wanted it back, I was like, yeah, I mean, I've, I've like beat the game and all that. So I've just devoured that thing. So tell me about what you guys think of Mario Kart Double Dash, if you, if you played it. <clears throat> Didn't play it. Jesus. The only, Missed the whole GameCube, so. Uh, funny, so I only owned three games that weren't either Sports or Smash Brothers on the GameCube. Okay. Uh, and they were Animal Crossing, one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah. Uh, Metroid Prime, which I actually mm-hmm. don't think I ever got around to beating. I played a lot of it, but I don't think I ever beat it. Uh, and this one will throw you for a doozy. Harvest Moon. Hmm. Yeah. I actually liked that now, GameCube Harvest Moon game quite a bit. Uh, those are all three interesting, though none of them are Mario Kart Double Dash. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to get to... So the only Mario Kart I've ever owned, quote-unquote, and this was like when I was a kid, so it wasn't really mine, was Mario Kart 64, right? It's the only one I've ever played extensively. Uh, I've dabbled with some of the other ones. I, I, I can't sit here and tell you I've never played Double Dash because I, I do remember in my mind's eye playing a Mario Kart game where there was somebody on the back of my vehicle, right? Which obviously is Double Dash. Uh, but I, I can't tie it to any specific time period, right? Or any like moment. Sure. Um, yeah. So let's this... just focus on this part, Jared, that... The last time you owned a Mario Kart game was on the N64. So that means you didn't own Double Dash. You didn't own it on the Wii. You didn't own it I didn't on own the a Wii. Wii U. Uh, I'm sorry, what? I didn't own a Wii or a Wii U, period. Like the consoles. So a Dom, I guess we found the one person in the United States that didn't own a Wii console. Man. Uh, I would be the second. I didn't own a Wii. I <laughs> How did briefly... in the fuck? For like, you two like two, have two a podcast and you didn't even own a Wii. Because that system had bad games. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I, I mean, every weird. system has bad games. The Wii still had plenty of amazing games on there, dude. Uh, none of them that interested was, me. That's the thing. I think me and Jared are similar because that was the time period where the only game that existed was Call of Duty 4. And so Jesus. the Wii... I, it, it didn't have Call of Duty 4, so I didn't care about it. You know, wow. <laughs> the not only really reason, fair, but... Yeah. The only reason I ever thought about buying one was uh, Sunshine. Um, but, like, that didn't tempt me enough. And it's like... So, I would actually... Funny enough, I would roast my first cousins because they had a Wii. It was their only console. And they would play Madden on that uh-huh. thing. And Madden looked like hot garbage. Like, Madden looked better on the PSP than it did on the Wii. Obviously, I'm being yeah. hyperbolic, but it was terrible. So I would just roast them for having a Wii. Um, but yeah, I've also never been a huge car racer guy either, Doran. So it's not even just a specifically a Mario Kart thing. I'm I'm not a racing guy in general. Uh, I think the only racing game I've purchased in the last 15 years was Split Second on the PS3. Uh, just because it had a really cool like you know mechanic with the time manipulation. That's the only racing game I can remember purchasing ever. Well, I know you're Mr. Kart Racer. I know that stings a little bit. <laughs> glad, I'm glad we could share all these wonderful memories with all these games that we that we played. <laughs> I know Jordan's like this game. Jared up. hasn't played this game. Jared hasn't played this game. Jared hasn't played. I I thought I thought I might hit you on a couple, but uh, hashtag you know. exposed. Um, hashtag exposed indeed. It's cool, but the, you know the point of this podcast too isn't just to talk about things all of us have experienced. As a group, right? All of us have, you know, a shared experience yeah, with this cool here. Diverse it's diverse backgrounds. <laughs> it's still disappointing. I know. I'm kidding. I know. I'm kidding. Uh, no, we, you know, we, we share in in tons of experiences with games. And so it is, it's cool that we have different uh, areas of expertise, you could say. Well, and especially when you're younger, I think it's hard. Be, you don't have as much expendable income, right? You're not necessarily choosing all the games you get to play. And right. for me, I, you guys are probably the same way. It was like I had a very limited amount of games I could get per year, right, just based on my family's expendable income. And right. I've always been super into football, so I knew that I always wanted to get the new Madden. So then outside of that, what other games would I play? Um, 
But obviously, as we grow older, it's like, oh, I can go after all of these. Like, there was tons of games I would look at in Game Informer and all of these commercials and magazines that I was like, oh, I want to play that. But in the back of my mind, I can't afford that after I'm getting the, you know what I mean? So and here's the thing. Yeah. In reality, kids never actually have to experience that again because for the price of buying a single video, one brand new game a year, you just have Xbox Games Pass and then it's like, dude, can you imagine if you're a kid growing up with Games Pass? One of the crazy unreal. thing, uh, this is a little current, but uh, NBA 2K20 uh, got put on Xbox Game Pass the day we're recording this. Before the NBA Finals have even you know started... <laughs> Or playoffs right. in general. It's like if you're a kid who's super into basketball, it's not like yeah, it's, it's kind not of just like indie bullshit on there. Exactly. Um, it's Sorry, there's an immense developers. value these days for kid gamers. Like I could have, if I was a kid now, I could totally talk my mom into having me earn ten bucks a month to pay for a Game Pass, and I would be set. <laughs> it's yeah, incredible. Dude. Like, and then on sure, top of there's that, games that you would want to play that aren't going to be on the service, right? But for the most part, especially if you're in, like an Xbox kid, then you've got the exclusives on there, like Halo and shit. Are you kidding me? Fortnite and, and Apex Legends, both free to play. Plus, on top of that, like, oh, yeah, because e- even with that, there's still a limitation of yeah. There's exclusive games to each console, and that was for me too as a kid. You could only ever have yeah. one console <laughs> each generation, right? But as we get closer, like imagine having X Cloud, then you don't even need an Xbox. And you can have Bro, all that. So then, I was not about that. Like, I only got even... bought one console per generation for my parents. But I was like, me and my brothers, we're gonna make, we're gonna find a way to get the <laughs> other consoles. The only time I owned multiple consoles in the same generation was 360 PS3, and I got the PS3 at the very end of its life cycle. I bought it to play Last of Us. Uh, and you didn't even do that. But then this generation, I own all three, right? Well, it's weird how like the Switch falls because it's technically the Wii U, but you know, whatever. Um, before we no, hop into don't, s- no, don't, 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 don't give into their bullshit, Jared. <laughs> we um, know that the that what we know what's up, and Nintendo's not pulling the wool over our eyes. The Wii, the Wii U was uh, episode one forty nine point one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, but so before we get, I want to ask you some questions about your experience on the podcast and stuff, Jordan. Ten this thing, but before that, let's get into these stats I brought up. Okay, stat so, me. The first thing I looked up because I went through all the podcasts and I got some numbers and some interesting tidbits. Thank so the you first for thing doing is that, Jared. your attendance on the podcast. How many times oh, you recorded? God. I didn't realize I was getting tested. Damn. No, 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 no. It sounds bad, but it is interesting because we've done 180 episodes, and I was curious of like, well, how many have you been on, right? right. Um, so I broke it down in, in sections of uh, 50. I forgot to mark down the last one, which was 151 to 180, which is 30, right? So I don't have right. that one. I forgot to write that one down, but I have the total. So through episode uh, 1 through 50, you were on 43 of them. So you only missed nice. 7. Nice. On... Uh, episodes 51 to 100, it was your your worst one, it, it looks like, was 37 out of 50. And then on episodes 101 through 150, you were in 42 of the 50, which is your highest. Well, no, the first one, I guess, was 43. Um, yeah. And I think the last one was like 28 of, uh, or 27 of 31 or something like that. Yeah. Uh, for those listening, you should be familiar with the term Fireside Groove. It's, you know, what we call the two-man podcast, or it's either me and Dom when Jordan's out or me and Jordan when Dom's out. Yeah. Uh, in total, out of the 180 episodes, Jordan, how many Fireside Grooves do you think me and you had? Twelve. Thirty-three. Wow. That yeah, was a lot off. more than I thought. Yeah. Uh, now, and- real quick, since we're on the subject... If uh, Chris isn't coming in right behind me, and you guys end up doing a two-man podcast for however long, uh, does that just mean that they're all Fireside Grooves? I think Fireside Fireside Groove Groove is hosting with one less host than the total number of regular hosts. So Fireside Groove, I guess, would be me by myself. Uh, uh, So Dom... the, The term will stick around without me, right? Yeah. So, Dom, while I was doing this, I also marked on your fireside groups because, like, why not? Out of the 180, how many do you think? And before you answer, I'll say my assumption going in was that me and Jordan had a lot more fireside grooves uh, than me and you because it always felt like you were gone more because, obviously, you had stuff that you had to deal with and yada, yada, yada. Whereas with Jordan, it didn't seem like he, 
he missed as much. So I'm curious to see what you think your like number is in terms of total. Man. What are you going to do, Dom? What are you going to do? Well, I know I missed 33 because you just said you and Jordan had 33 fireside groups. Yeah, so, so how many did me and you have together when Jordan was gone? That doesn't correlate necessarily. Based on your based on your lead in, I'm gonna say less. Uh, so you think my assumption five. was correct? And maybe I had that backwards. <laughs> okay, yeah, because then you said 45. I'm so twist turned around. 25. Uh, close, 27. So less yeah. than Jordan, but closer than I thought. Uh. And the total attendance, sorry I didn't go over this too, for Jordan, out sure, of the 180 sure. episodes, you were on 150, Jordan, which is really good. Nice. I'll yeah. take that. You know, with uh, this not, we've, we've discussed it before, obviously, off the show. With this not being our job, I think uh, I am satisfied with that. Yeah. Uh, the, like I said, there's nothing, like, behind any of these numbers. I just think they're really cool to look at stats for stuff, you know, so pulling the stats. Passive aggressive. I see it. <laughs> Uh, this is really cool. So out of the 180 episodes, the longest streak you ever missed in like in consecutive episodes, and this only happened once, uh, was 61, 62, 63, which was three episodes. You never yeah. missed more than that, and it was the only time you ever missed three episodes in a row. It was only ever two. Most of the time, only one. Um, so that that's cool. might have been around the time when I completely lost my voice around Christmas one year. And I mean, I could not talk, not even like, you know, when you lose your voice and you can still like, you can like, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll get the report to you by tomorrow. I got that. You know, you can like just barely utter stuff. I could not even do that. Not even that. And your longest streaks, this was something really cool to look at. So I'll work from uh, the back forward. Your third longest streak was 15 episodes in a row without missing. And that was episodes 149 to 164. Uh, your second most was 16, which was 128 to 144. So if you think about that, between 128 and 164, you only missed four podcasts. That's pretty crazy. That's like 40 episodes. Your longest streak, how long do you think your longest streak was, Jordan? 14 episodes? No, because remember, your second most was 16. My bad. Uh... 18 episodes okay interesting guess and i'll tell you this much i'll give you this so if maybe you want to recalculate your longest streak was from the first episode to the point where the streak ended so it's from the very first episodes 26 is your longest streak from episode one to episode 26 you didn't miss a single podcast which is crazy that's half a year (laughs) yeah it's a lot uh, some other stuff here. Uh, there was only one solo episode I've ever done. That was episode 63. No guests, no nothing. Just me talking to the microphone, which I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, episode 96 is the only episode in which it was me and a guest and neither of you were there. Um, which was Logan. Uh, that was on the podcast. Uh, next up, episode 21 was the first video podcast we ever did. The first one you guys ever recorded video. Ah. And we put it on the uh, YouTube video. Uh, next up, the episode in which Jordan showed up without his hair and his beard was episode Ooh. 23 from Losing the Bet. Nice. Couldn't nice. find the episode where he did the bet because that would you know I had to go through hours of like the first 22 episodes, which is a lot. Yeah, um, yeah. But the episode where he showed up with no hair at all was episode 23. Um, what else do I have here? Oh. Uh, do you guys know what the first game Jordan ever talked about on the podcast was in the what have we, what have we been playing segment? Wow. 2016. Remember, first podcast was in 2016. Wow. Okay, let me think. What would I have been playing? This surprised me, boy, tell you what. Okay, give me this hint, Jared. <laughs> okay. At that time, was it a newly released game like within the last six months? Let me Google because I actually don't know. Let's see here. Gotcha. Huh. This Rise is... of the Tomb Raider. No, it's definitely not that. <laughs> uh, this this game came out uh, a month before we started. Mm. So February 2016. The I'll give you this. It's not an original. Like it's part of an already already established franchise. It's oh, an okay. entry My in a franchise. My guess was gonna be wrong then. My guess was gonna be wrong. Um, there was two big games that came out in February that year, one being The Division, 
and the other one being this game. It's not Bloodborne. That was 2015. Yeah. You're not oh, going to get it. If I'm being honest, I don't think you're going to guess it. Where's 2016? I probably didn't play it for very long. No, you, from what I initially heard, you were enjoying it, but it was a bit of a letdown from what you expected from it. Oh, I just Googled it, and I'm pretty sure I got it. Uh, you want to throw it out there? Wait, hold on. Jordan, do you have a last guess before Dom gives his? <laughs> last guess. Man, I'm blanking on what came out in spring of 2016, or February 2016. I'm going to say... Is it spinoff? I, my guess was Neo, but that's incorrect. No, okay. That's not a pre-established franchise. Dom, what's your guess? Far Cry Primal. Yep, Far Cry Primal. Wow. That was not a guess, by the way. I looked it up. (laughs) You know why I didn't guess that? Because to me, that is an extremely forgettable game. Yep, (laughs) exactly. That's why I was like, the first game you ever talked about was that. I was like, really? Out of all of the, like... The games Jordan has played, that's the first one. It's so interesting, you know, to go back in time and look at it. It's so cool. Uh, Next up, uh, Jordan Co. 1... E3 2017. That's when everyone tied, except for me. I was the only loser. Uh, And he won E3 2018 predictions, which is really cool. Uh, This was a a little tidbit that I didn't notice until looking back at the episodes. Ian Hink from Easy Allies guessed it on the podcast three times, right? Yes. The first time, Dom uh, Dom was on the podcast. Jordan wasn't. The second time, or reverse, sorry. First time, Jordan was on the podcast. Dom wasn't. The second time, Dom was on the podcast, Jordan wasn't. And then the third time, it was all of us. Which I thought nice. was pretty interesting. Cool that, guy. Yeah. Uh, Big shout out to both him and Michael Huber of the Easy Allies coming through our show. That was very kind of them. I'm seeing if there's anything else I forgot to list. Nope, that's all of the stats I brought up. Once again, I wanted to find the episode where you made the bet about your haircut, but I just couldn't find it. I tried, but... Too much. Well, we know this much. It was about me finishing Persona 3 um, yep. FES. And it's a, uh, as we now know, I, in 2020, I've still yet to finish a, a Persona game, <laughs> much less that one. So um, they are beasts uh, beyond all measure. So someday, maybe someday. I will finally conquer an entire Persona game. I can safely say that I love the series because I've put more than 20 hours into 3, <laughs> 4, and 5. So it's like, yeah, I, I love the fucking series at this point. Have I finished a game? No. But that's, you know. You can love a series a problem with that. They the can games. suck it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's probably way more hours than I've put into, like, the entirety of the Legend of Zelda series. Probably mm, possible. Maybe. Yeah, that's maybe. another thing. Is like I've put a lot of hours into Zelda games, but I've never finished one. But I still love Zelda games, you know. Mm-hmm. Before we get into like your closing words for the audience and us and stuff, Jordan, when we close out the podcast, the last thing I wanted to ask you, uh, we covered this I think like episode fifty probably, but you know we probably have new listeners and it's been a while since then. I wanted to know from your perspective how it was seeing my message asking for you know hosts for a podcast and that whole process obviously you don't have to go through the full extended thing but maybe like a cliff notes of joining the podcast from your perspective sure it's funny that you mentioned that jared because i can remember one of the things that i said in reply to your uh initial posting which was that uh talking about you know what my what uh part of gaming i'm really into what like my section would be i was i remember saying specifically typing i feel like i know a lot about playstation which is Actually, just such like a big-headed thing to say right email. like i'm pretty sure i know a lot about playstation okay <laughs> okay <laughs> so that is a goofy uh remembrance that i have but uh yeah you basically posted on the kind of funny facebook group uh, mentioning that you were thinking about starting a podcast, and you know this, I wouldn't say this is something that's uh, that was entirely uh, surprising at that point in time. There were plenty of other people doing it, and they have, you know, been friends of the show for us. And now uh, our buddy Blessing is is a kind of funny member. So this, um, we we are part of that uh, group of people. Um, that started those podcasts around that time. So you can tell that there was, you know, kind of funny was influencing people. 
in a positive way. So, um, yeah, you, you put that out and, um, obviously Dom and I and several other people replied and said that we were interested. And I also remember saying, you know, I'm willing to put in 20 plus hours into this every week. And it's like, what the fuck am I going to (laughs) do for work? If I'm like basically have a full time job, just like with podcasting and all that. And, you know, there's certainly been permutations of what we wanted this whole thing to be. But nonetheless, I think we uh, figured out a, a solid formula for our podcast and we had plenty of incredible times. But yeah, just for that uh, initial thing, um, we just had like a, maybe a quick Skype call or whatever, uh, getting to know each other. And uh, then you said, you know, I've got a couple other guys I'm looking at, but I think it's going to be Dom. And of course... Uh, it was, <laughs> but we got Dom and it turned out great. He's an awesome co-host and it, it obviously worked out the way that it was supposed to. And, uh, we've had, as I mentioned, many great friends come on the show along the way. So that's how I remember the origins of the controlled interests. Yeah, it was, it's so interesting to look back. Like, I, I don't have the email. I looked for it. Unfortunately, I don't have those, like, initial emails with you guys. Right. Um, but it was so funny because I put that thing out, and honestly, I was terrified of not getting any replies, right? I'm like, God, I'm yeah. going to put this message out there, and I'm not going to have anybody, and then what am I going to do? But I ended up getting, right. like, between 50 to 20 people interested, and I, do, you're, I think you're right because OKB started almost the same time we did. So there was this movement of people getting inspired by kind of funny to do their own thing, which right. was a great time for me to ask because I think that was my best chance of finding people. And right. yeah, I remember having to like weirdly interview these people and ask them yeah. questions. And, you know, part of the reason I was so down with you immediately is because you were kind of so confident in knowing stuff. Right. Because people tend to like. Yes. It's not even being humble, but it's like they don't want to overstep and say they know more than they actually know. But the fact that you were confident, sure. and I was like, oh, this guy wouldn't say that unless, you know, he might not know everything. But saying that means that he knows quite a bit at the very least, right? Something. I still I still get pissed off when, like, professional video game industry podcasters are fucking up things that are just easy. You know, like, a pub- who published what game or what studio uh you know is a uh, first party versus not owned by sony microsoft whoever just random examples but um i was always i've always been that way and certainly to a fault at times but uh the kind of me just like soaking up being a student of the industry and soaking up as much information as possible is certainly something that i thought well if i'm going to do a podcast about video games then this is going to come out, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's so interesting to look back on all that stuff with the podcast. Uh, when we originally started, I don't know if you guys ever watched the edits I did for the first couple of episodes, like the first 15, but what I would do is I would have black and white images of us three. And every time one of us talked, I'd put the colored version up. So it would only like pop color whenever one of us spoke. The right editing enough. process for that <laughs> was insane, really? and I can't believe I did that. I was like, Jesus yeah. Christ, what are you thinking? This is awful. I mean, it looked yeah. cool. I'm saying from an editing perspective, it was awful. If you had it like on an automated system where it could recognize, you know, oh, this is voice A, this is voice B, this is voice C, and that's the uh, picture associated with it, that would be different. But yeah, you by Manually. hand, wow, <laughs> wow, that is dedication on another level. It was awful. Bad decision, but it looks cool in retrospect. Um, it did. Is there anything you wanted to say for your last episode, Jordan, before we close out here? Any final words? Yes. Well, as you mentioned, uh, this is my last time as a uh, regular host. And I know that I've mentioned before on the show, but it, it is worth bringing back up that I plan on uh, being here for stuff like, <laughs> hopefully... An upcoming reveal of the PlayStation 5. Maybe it'll just be magazine articles until the thing's already out in stores, and then there will be really not much to talk about. It'll just be trickling out of this. Oh, hey, by the way, it's got these cool things and the uh, triggers on the controller. Like, <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Wired. Thanks, Sony. 
But yeah, if we have uh, if we get a big old reveal event, um, you know, it looks like some stuff's a little shaky with the next generation of consoles and the coronavirus. So, um, and I just want to say I've heard a lot of people. Sorry to be on tangent here, but of course, a lot of people are talking about uh, how the coronavirus is affecting the start of the next generation of consoles on video game podcasts. And I just want to say that the focus here should obviously be on the people and their health and not how quickly can we get our fun boxes, you know? Um, so that should be focus first. And if it takes until next year for us to get our consoles, then as we were just talking about with games pass and how lucky you would be to be a kid with games pass and have all these games to play, all of us have plenty of shit to play, so we just want to just be there. playing Cyberpunk without our upgraded yeah. Like there's not pack. gonna be enough good shit to play. Like you don't already bitch about your backlogs all over the place, anyways. You know, just fucking chill. Dom, you're you know, saying that as if months. Cyberpunk might not get delayed. <laughs> true, true. That's I a mean, good point. It's possible. It, it's now affecting all kinds of stuff. So, um, but the focus should be on you know helping the people and their health. So. Um, but yeah, I would just say that, uh, you know, I'll be back around whenever you guys, uh, want to hit me up for something like the, uh, the Sony reveal event or whatever. Um, we'll see what's, what's coming down the road after something like that. But I am excited for the next generation of consoles. I am excited for, uh, what that could possibly bring. And I'm also excited to, uh, become a listener of the show now. As I've mentioned, part of the reason for me leaving the show is due to me wanting to take a break from uh, podcasts, video game podcasts, and specific uh, to be specific. But um, so I I won't be listening right away. But it will be very fun to see uh, you know check in with you guys and see what you're chatting about, see what you're playing, um, and of course we'll be chatting on the sidelines as well off the off the air so I want to say thank you both to you guys to both of you guys as well as our audience for being being there and and having this conversation about video games which has been so fun in so many moments and has been um, very insightful in other moments where I take a lot of recommendations for you from you guys or I hear um, I love I have always loved hearing from you guys um, about games that I'm not interested, I've mentioned this before, games that I'm not interested in playing, but games that I'm nonetheless interested in to an extent, and I, uh, hearing it from a friend is like, oh, well, that's what I wanted from that game. I didn't necessarily want to play it or, or beat the whole game or anything, but uh, hearing a buddy's experience uh, goes a long way and kind of satiates me for that specific game, so that's been fun as well. Um, want to give a shout out to all the players out there keep on playing your video games keep enjoying the game itself play what you want to play fuck this backlog shit fuck this all about the controversy surrounding video games let's get back to the fucking fun man that's what i want to say because that's what video games are about it's not about you know the fucking diversity quota in the witcher or you know, like, who's getting fucked over on the back end? Because everybody's getting fucked over somewhere, right? And so I get that people want to shine a light on difficult or fucked up situations, and there's certainly a place for that. But I do think that uh, we want to get back, uh, or we should want to get back to the root of why we came to video games in the first place, which was for genuine joy and entertainment and challenge, of course, in many aspects. So, um, shout out to video game players, those of us that love the games for the beautiful experiences that they can and have been, uh, can be and have been. So, um, I guess that's my little spiel. Uh, I'm sure we're not ending right this second, but, uh, yeah, (laughs) shout out to all that stuff and shout out to comic books, even though they're not video games. I wanted to say real quick before we close out, I don't know if you have anything to say too, Dom, so I'll give you a moment after I'm done, uh, just in case you want to say anything. I commend your, you know, 
dedication to this podcast. It's very right. rare in life to have things outside of familial relationships last four years. Like, it's not a very common thing, right? Even at a job, you're yeah. lucky to be somewhere four years or a romantic relationship. So the fact that we were able to do this podcast together for four years, you know, a kid from New Mexico, a kid from Michigan, and a kid from Tennessee is really cool. Um, Indeed. And, you know, it's hard to get people that you know to be committed to something, much less two oh, yeah. people you've never met before and talked through through the Internet. So the yeah. fact that both of you have done 180 podcasts, like, that's a lot. You know what I mean? Four years is a yeah. lot to come back every week or mostly every week. The only Eat reason I didn't miss is, and all that. It's fun, you know? Yeah. So I commend you for being, you know. I knew that this time was going to come for at least one of you because we. the reality of the situation is we don't get paid for this and we have varied yeah. interests in other places and sometimes you do get burned out or sometimes you do want to change things and there's no ill will for wanting to leave, you know what I mean? The fact that right. you were with us 180 episodes, period, is an accomplishment enough in and of itself, you know? So. Yeah, thank much. you, Jared. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, I think Jared's right. This is a it's – been it's like a long-ass time. Like, that can't really be overstated. Um, yeah. So, I mean, this is like a, a, a phase change. Like, it's a, you know, this is a generation or whatever, however you want to The Jordan uh, arc is complete. <laughs> yeah, dude. Right, I mean, it the feels... Infinity uh, Saga. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like, oh, you know, uh, yeah, the Infinity Saga is ending, or, like, the sequel trilogy is ending. Like, it's a phase. You know, it's a large... Ooh, I'm way better than on. the sequel trilogy, but okay? The good thing is the a, Infinity Saga. Yeah. This it, is a bad the quality break. of these things. <laughs> That's a good thing is this isn't a bad break or anything. We're still going to have Jordan back on the podcast, right, not right, obviously right. every week, but he'll be back. This isn't like a sour breakup or anything. Um, right. it, it's it's cool, though, that this happened, period. Like, it just, you know, and it's yeah, weird because think about the amount of people outside of your significant other, if you have one, that you talk to almost every week the last four years. Just think about that. You know what I mean? Who else did you talk to almost every week outside of us three talking to each other? True. And obviously we missed weeks and stuff, but it's crazy, man, when you actually right. sit down and think about it. And I yeah. have all that stuff archived. So, like, Jordan, if you or Dom ever want the audio uh, for the, the episodes, you know, if yeah, YouTube crashes and burns, I have all yeah. of that stuff archived and backed up um, in zip folders. So, Awesome. Nice. Yeah. I love that. That is that's something I didn't know, and I'm very excited to hear. Yeah. Uh, anything else you wanted to say, Dom? No, man. It's just to uh, dodge those tornadoes. And, uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do want to say, you know, just for uh, uh, solidarity, uh, I do live in Nashville, Tennessee, in inside uh, the heart of the city. And um, we obviously recently had tornadoes. It is March 5th as we're recording this. And that happened earlier this week. So, um, you know, lots of love to all those out there affected and lots of thanks to all those out there helping. It was uh, tearing up buildings five minutes away from me, and I slept through the whole thing. So I was very lucky. My family in the surrounding areas and um, all that were safe. So, um, yeah, lots of love there. The moment I saw it, I was like, oh, God, I hope something you know, didn't happen with Jordan. So I messaged you. I was like, hopefully your family and you are safe because I saw that. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, my, Man, and- I woke up to you know crazy text from my mother about call me, call me, and I was like, What's oh, going God. on? It's a beautiful day. <laughs> yeah, what's up? <laughs> Man, I am always like just one step behind on big news because I saw Jared's message like, Jordan, hope you're doing all right. I'm like, why wouldn't he be doing okay? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with you? Uh, so, yeah, that's been it for this week's episode. Uh, it's going to be a shame that Jordan's no longer a part of us on an active every week basis, but he'll be back whenever that PS5 event uh, decides to you know pop up. Um, that, and I got to say, Jared, real quick, there's, there's two tiny little sentiments I want to give. One is that in the near future, I can feel it in my bones. I can see it in my crystal ball, as you guys might remember. There's going to be a game announcement that comes by it might be an e3 thing when you know hype's already higher it might just be a random time that we're not expecting maybe it's they finally talk about this goddamn batman game that they're making but i'm gonna be like holy shit i gotta be on the show next week i well, just that's a cool i can thing. feel it coming is if anything like that happens you can just be like hey can i be on the podcast this week and yeah of course <laughs> hey uh <laughs> hi uh so if you and guys want to i just want to say May the Force be with us all. May the Force be with you, Dom. May the Force be with you, Jared. May the Force be with us all. 
if you want to follow if you want to follow us after in the, I don't know what this is going to be called, the the duo arc, now that the Jordan arc is done. Uh, on, on Twitter, you can find us at CTRLINT. That's Controlled Interest Abbreviated. You can follow Dom at DomZorios. You can follow me at Jared underscore. And I guess this will be, this will be the last time I say this for a while, which is weird. You can follow Jordan at Malamotus. Um, uh, go to YouTube, search Controlled Interest. will pop up. Make sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know when we upload new videos. On iTunes, if you follow us there, leave us a five-star review. Uh, you can leave a comment if you like, too. The review is really important for us moving up and people seeing the podcast. And I guess Spotify hates hey, Jordan because I submitted Oof. our podcast a while ago for Spotify certification. And yeah. of all weeks, they decided to approve us. The podcast is finally on Spotify. So you if you go. want to listen to this again nice. on uh, Spotify, you can go ahead and listen there. Really awesome. I think Spotify certification there. just takes a sh- long ass <laughs> fucking time. Yeah. Uh, I was like, oh, when is it going to happen? And I finally got the email this week. I was like, of course. Boom. Along with Jordan's departure, we're going to be announcing, hey, we're now on Spotify. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Best timing ever. Um, but yeah, once again, we appreciate Jordan being on as long as he did. It's going to be weird without him. Uh, but yeah, we'll have him back in no time uh, at all, it'll feel like. So, catch you guys Thanks. next week. Actually, you do the outro, Jordan. Well, I can't say catch you next week, but I'll be catching you soon. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, may the force be with you.